So I picked up a battery tester. This is the BT168D. Now on the, per on the purchase, on the page that I bought this from, it said it was an Aneng unit, but I don't really see that as being an Aneng unit. It doesn't say that anywhere on here. Um, but essentially it is what it looks like. It's a tester for batteries. This thing slides back and forth. It's got no spring attached, so it's just, whoop, it's literally just slided around. Now, it means that you can grab hold of a battery. Now, here's one here. You've got uh, red for positive, black for negative, and you just sandwich it on, and you get an LCD display. Now, I've seen loads of these types of devices, but with a little analog meter on there, and it usually says replace bad, good, um, full or something, like something not very helpful. Whereas um, this is more helpful. Now, granted, you still need to do some kind of mental arithmetic with the device that you have, the current draw, what the internal resistance of the battery might be, can it deliver the current that you need, uh, or will the voltage fall away or whatever. Um, but most of us do that anyway, but being able to see at a glance without having to get your meter probes on the battery and sort of hold it and then glance elsewhere. This is quite nice. It doesn't hold the battery, so you sort of need to just have it as a one hand deal like that. Um, but it reads all sorts of sizes, which is great. So we're going to take a look inside this as well in a minute. So I've got one of these. What even size is this? Is it a D or a C? Don't know. It doesn't say. <laughs> Um, but we can throw that on there and see that we've got 1.26 volts on there. That probably should, it's been sat for a while, probably should charge. I have no use for these. I just bought them because they were cheap. Um, we can also test these little triple A's. Making good contact or not making good contact? Oh, it's just not got a lot of power in it. You can see that fluctuating around. Um, but 1.14. Now, as I mean, my multimeter is going to read this battery differently. And why is that? Well, this thing draws a current. It's got to draw a current because it's running the display. But for an accurate battery measurement, it's not uh, getting good contact on the positive terminal there. For active battery measurement, you need to have a load on the battery. Otherwise, you won't see what the real um, voltage is. Um, we can also read some of these sort of higher power batteries. So this is not going to read. There we go. Uh, this is a little lithium ion battery, I guess. You know, one of the ones where it says, I will catch fire. Let's spin it around. <laughs> Trust fire. Not very reliable, is it? Still 4.11 volts. Pretty good. Um, and hopefully, Oh, that does not fit. So an 18650 cell will not fit in the holder. I did think it might. We've also got other little cells. So this is an LR44. Uh, it's the plus on the top. It probably is. Let's sandwich that, <laughs> sandwich that in. That's a bit more difficult to do, but it will read it. Ah, there we go. 1.45. And let's try a little coin cell. So this is a CR2032, but it's a lithium one. Not reading that very well. Hang on. 3, 4.06. I'm really having to push that very hard. And then just a standard CR2032. And we're reading 3.06. So Oh yeah, it also does nine volt. Sorry, forgot to mention that. Just on the top there, you can see there's a couple of contacts. Um, and we'll take a look inside in a minute as well, and find out what is going on. So if I flip that around, no, the other way, no, that way, yeah. So there's actually some guards here to prevent you from putting it in sort of the wrong way around, which is good, because you probably don't want to put the reverse voltage on something like a nine volt battery. Uh, and we've got 8.31. So this one's a bit low. Let's get inside the thing. So there are just a couple of screws on the back. Uh, there's also a little chart on the back here, which I don't particularly find useful. 
Uh, battery size 1.5 volts, 9 volts, good, low and replace. Not, not super handy. I can't find my super fun screwdriver that's electric. I was using it on a project downstairs and I've lost it. Well, that's not quite true. I have the screwdriver, but I can't find the bits. So let's see. Oh. <laughs> okay, so there's not much in it. We've got a slider here. That's so that slider runs on that track. In fact, we can turn it around here, can't we? So that slider runs here. Oh, right. Okay, I see. That's actually revealed something a little more interesting than I thought. Let's have a look here. So we've got this slider. In fact, I can see where problems might arise immediately. And on the contact on that slider, we've got one wire coming off to the board. This is where I think we might have problems in the future. If you were to move that back and forward a lot, so you can see that wire. There's a lot of slack in that wire, admittedly, but it's going to sort of stress that joint eventually. So if it stops working, it might just be that wire comes undone. But you can see this comes down to the board and there's a little marker there. Let's come in a little closer. So by mark, what I meant was, um, was this over here where it said uh, 1.5, but I've just, where it said five volts rather, and I've just uh, scraped that off a little bit. Um, and it says 1.5. So that would suggest to me that that is a boost. In fact, it's upside down. There we go, that's better. Uh, would suggest to me that it's a boost circuit. Also, I think L1 here is probably an inductor and we've got a couple of caps. A transistor, which says E3OF. Not sure what kind of transistor that is. Add a diode. Um, so I'm gonna guess that it's some kind of voltage doubler, which probably means bad idea to put lithium ion batteries on here because they're going through the 1.5 volt section. So well, actually, you know what? We can measure that in a second. Before we put it back together and measure it against the multimeter, we'll just have a quick check. Um, we've got our microcontroller here. No markings on that, obviously, of course. And um, over here, we've got our nine volt input, which is interesting. So our nine volt input comes in over here, which is a separate, uh, a separate bit from the normal 1.5 volts input down here. And we've got a diode here for reverse polarity protection and we have a voltage regulator. I'm assuming that's what that diode's for. Um, it says HT30 and I think that's probably a whole tech chip uh, and that's the short code for it, I think, for when they're a smaller chip. And I think it's probably something like an HT7330 or something like that. So a three volt uh, fixed output uh, regulator and that's probably driving the chip and the display. So. I think this voltage doubler might bring it up to three volts or way too much if we're putting on a big battery, we'll see. So let's throw on 1.5 volts and see what we get. Let's um, come out a little bit so we can get the multimeter in, shall we? I don't know where we're gonna be probing on here. So uh, let's hook on our negative and also our positive. Are we gonna be able to get it on there? Yeah. Hopefully that's on. Uh, power supply, 1.5 volts. 50 milliamp current limit. We're drawing current so I can tell it's working. 1.5-ish. So let's see if we can't probe the output on here and just see what voltage we're getting. Where are my leads? They're all in disarray, but we've got a ground connection over here that we can on to, oh, that's the wrong one. Excuse me. So ground there. Our input says 1.49 and then our output must be over here somewhere, probably on this cap, I would imagine. Yeah, there we go, it's doubling the voltage, 2.97. So let's throw on a little bit more voltage than we want. Uh, so I think we've already measured a bigger battery, the Trustfire one. So let's put 2.5 volts on. Uh, 
No. So we're still getting 2.97 at 2.5 volts. So let's put way more on. 4.2. So perhaps that isn't a transistor and maybe it's a voltage doubler and regulator. Maybe that's a regulator. Don't know, let's prove it. 3.9, so that's the output or input. Hmm. I don't know is the answer there. Sadly, I don't know the answer. So four volts there. Yeah, it looks like it's a voltage doubler, but I don't know why we're still getting about three volts. Um, when we have a much higher input, but I'm no expert. I've got my multimeter here and I don't think this test is fair because I'm not going to be putting a load on these batteries, but um, we are going to have a little look. And this is the reason I bought this device was because I hate reading batteries with probes. I'm doing it the wrong way around because I find it super awkward and they can ping off. So this one says 1.309. It's not going to read that far down, but um, we've got 1.3. That's pretty much what I expect. Now let's have a little look at the 9 volt battery. Uh, 8.496. And we've got 8.25. Now again, this is drawing a load because it's hard to keep that on there. 8.26, um, because it's regulating that voltage down to run the actual device. So there is a current draw. So this battery is on its way out. And let's have a look at this Tronic one. 1.25. Now, if this one's fairly low, which it probably is, it's probably going to read a bit higher for something without a current draw. But 1.25 is fine for a nickel metal hydride, isn't it? 1.26. Okay, and how about something like this little uh, AAA? It's a pretty old one. Nothing. Hmm. Oh, okay. That's zero point. Like, that's a dead cell. Um, let's try a different one. That is a rechargeable, but uh, obviously it's been around a long time. This one's got poor contacts. 1.22. Oh, yeah. It's, it's got a mucky, mucky bottom on it. What? <laughs> and we've got. 1.23 there. So a little bit of current draw uh, is bringing that down. So um, I'm going to set this up so we can measure how much current this is drawing. Right, so I've got this hooked up to my power supply. So it's going through my multimeter here. Um, we're in the milliamps mode. We might, might switch it to the amps mode uh, because there is a voltage drop related to this. So we'll, we'll see what that difference makes. Um, so we've got the negative hooked up here and the current out is coming from my black probe here and we're just gonna throw it on and see what we see. So at 1.2 volts, we've got 8.5 milliamps coming out here. Now I'm just gonna switch it over because there might be a really big voltage drop there um, or at least big enough to make a significant difference in our milliamps reading. So let's put it into the amps range which has a much lower drop. Mm. Well, my power supply says six milliamps and that says seven milliamps. Um, if I throw it up, it should reduce that. But yeah, I don't think there's a huge difference. So I think we'll stick with the milliamps range just to give ourselves a little bit of extra resolution. So at 1.2, it is 8.5. And 
Let's go up to nine volts. And then we're probing over here. And at nine volts, our current draw is 2.4 milliamps. And then for giggles, let's go with 4.2 on this contact here. And our current draw is 3.3333333 milliamps. Let's have a look at the other side of it. In fact, I can do that without actually messing about too much. Whoops, it easy. I'm gonna have to just hook that back on. And then I can just, hopefully you can see that. And it's reading 4.17. So there is a voltage drop through here. So let's have a look at the amps range and see if we can't match the voltage. So I'm getting 4.2 out of my power supply. 4.21 seems a bit closer and we're getting three milliamps. So yeah, just an interesting little meter really. And I think it's fairly useful. I like how quick and easy it is just to throw a battery on when you get your contacts on. Um, Come on now, he says simple. Uh, trying to do it on camera isn't very easy. Uh, so 1.3 volts, especially if you hold it like this, it seems like it's a lot easier just to sort of grab onto the battery, read its voltage. And it just gives you a general idea of how healthy that battery is. Now I don't tend to use many, if any sort of single use batteries like this one, but some people do, and I use them at work because sometimes we have to. And we've got 1.52 on that battery, so I know that that's a very healthy cell. So yeah, I, they're super cheap. So if you want something really, really simple to use, then this is pretty cool. It, I think you might also be able to repurpose this mechanically that's kind of cool, isn't it? I can imagine some things that you could do with that, with batteries potentially. Yeah, the clamps. <laughs> Why has that come up twice in a couple of videos? Anyway, I'll speak to you all soon.